There's a lot of reasons to use a password manager. It's more secure than just keeping your account in a text file, and you can use a different password for each account to maximize your security, and the password manager will remember them all for you. But you want to pick the right kind of password manager. Right off the bat, I can tell you that you want to avoid password managers that store your credentials in an online server. Most password managers follow that method of storage, as well as advertise that they will keep your passwords backed up and safe so you don't have to worry about losing them or them getting hacked. But the problem with this is storing your passwords online exposes them to any hacker on the internet willing to try and hack that password manager. And because all of those password manager users are stored in one database, it makes them a very valuable target to any hacker because they can compromise the accounts of potentially millions of people. But if you use an offline password manager, then the risk of a third party exposing your passwords is mitigated and it becomes your job to secure the passwords. Also, your passwords are a less valuable target in this scenario because only your passwords would be compromised by someone hacking your offline password manager. And chances are a professional hacker wouldn't be interested in your passwords unless, of course, your last name happens to be Snowden. Which brings us to KeePass XC. This is an offline password manager that I've been using for a few years now. It's open source, community developed, and it is built using the Qt5 libraries, which makes it a multi-platform application. You can use it on Linux, Windows, and the Mac OS. It's available in most software stores too, so it's easy to install on Ubuntu and Mint-based distros. Just search for KeePass XC in your repository. So to get started with it, we can either open up a new database or we can create a new one. I'll be making a new pass, a new database for this video. So go ahead and give your database a name and give it a description. And with the encryption settings, we don't really want to change anything here because KeePass XC automatically chooses the most secure settings. Um, it uses AES-256 for the encryption, and it will store your database format in the latest, most secure format, KDBX 4.0. So let's hit continue. And then here you want to go and set your password. So with a password manager, they just use a master password. So this is the only password that you'll have to remember and it will unlock your entire database. So you want to make sure that this is something that is super, super secure. And after you type it in, you can hit this I here to double check what the password is. So make sure that it meets all of your security requirements. I'd say probably good idea is a password that is this length, but don't create it out of a bunch of dictionary words like I did. So just because a password's long does not mean that it is secure. You also want to secure it against dictionary attacks, which this has poor security against that. And then we can also add additional protection. So you have the option of using a YubiKey, which you may have heard of before. A YubiKey is basically this flash drive here, which allows you to generate one-time use passwords. So in order to unlock the database, if you're using it with a YubiKey, you would need to also have a password generated on this and then insert it into the computer that you're trying to unlock the database on and use this password at the same time. So it's a two-factor authentication that really helps to make your database more secure because if a bad guy tried to break into it, he would need to not only need to know this password, but he would also need to have access to that YubiKey. And you can also add a key file as an alternative or in addition to using a YubiKey. So we're gonna go ahead and generate a key file here. And yeah, we'll store it in KeePassXC demo. We'll call it key file. All right, so then we have that generated and let's hit done. 
And what do we want to call this database? We'll call it demo database. All right, so let me show you guys what this uh, key file is all about. Uh, let me open up this here and open terminal vim key file. So it's kind of the same idea as the um, as the YubiKey, except this doesn't cost you any money because you don't have to pay for the YubiKey hardware. It's just this really long cryptographic code here. So you need to have this file on your computer that you're trying to unlock the database from. Now, as far as backing up this database and this key file goes, I recommend backing them up separately as well as storing them separately because it's just a little bit of common sense if you think of it. So if a hacker was able to access your machine and thus compromise the security of this database itself, like they could copy the database, you don't want them to also be able to copy the key file because then they will have one of the two factors of authentication. Now, they're not gonna be able to get in with that all by itself, like if I, um, go and close this database. And then I wanna try and access it. Uh, let's see, documents, demo. So if I go to try and open this database, I'll show you guys what'll happen. Do this so we can see all of them. And I think demo database was the one. So I'm gonna go ahead and try to do it with just the password, not the key file. And we're going to get this error here that it can't be opened. But then once we add in the key file, uh, go to documents, demo, key file. Now we're able to actually get into the database. So let me show you some of the options here for creating passwords. So you can create groups here. Say if you wanted to make this group emails and you can just put some notes in here. So this is where I store emails and we'll hit okay. And so within this folder here, you can come over here and start making your account. So we'll do a new entry and let's call this Gmail and username, I don't know, Gmail login. And then we'll come down here and then we can create a password. And there's an option up here to be able to generate your passwords. If we click up here on the icon next to the lock, this is our password generator. So from here, we can set how secure we want it to be. So we can set the length here all the way up to 128 if we wanted to. I think I'm gonna do 20, keep it a little bit more reasonable. And you can select the character types that you want down here. So you can do uppercase, lowercase, numbers. You can add in special characters. You can add in extended ASCII if that's supported by the platform that you're using as well. And uh, you can also do an actual passphrase as well, but I don't really suggest doing this because you can copy and paste these passwords to your clipboard and it's a password manager so the whole passphrase thing in my opinion is really only useful for your master password because that's something you would actually have to remember so we're going to just do the password and we're going to copy this to our clipboard and then we're going to use that as our password and you can see that it's letting us use this pseudo random password here and then you can just do the login, I mean the URL, which I guess would just be google.com, and then hit okay. So now you don't even have to click into the account to reveal what the credentials are to copy it. You can just click this to copy the username. And let me open up a gedit to show you guys. 
So I can paste the username right here and I can click this one to copy the password. And then the password is right there. All right, guys, so this is KeePassXC. Go ahead and download it so that you can have a secure password manager.